size bars floated in the bottom. I hope it's not more than four kids. It wasn't. It was just one child. He was wearing some sort of werewolf costume. The outfit was black. Tufts of fur haphazardly taped to his body. On his head was a hideous mask. The plastic snout was contorted into a snarl, revealing yellow teeth. Fake blood dripped from its mouth, caking the fur on its shoulders. Do you want some candy? I asked, my voice starting to waver. All the kids were gone. A terrible dread sung in my heart, my hand quivered on the doorknob. Can I have more? I slammed the short dot shut in his face. I clicked the lock. I ran to the back door and locked it. I closed the windows. Then I threw myself into the chair and sobbed. Costume was familiar. Horribly familiar. The yellow, sightless eyes, the pointed plastic teeth, familiar and alien all at once. I wrapped my arms around my knees and sat there, motionless on the couch, listening to the silence. Thump. I jolted up. Thump. My heart throbbed in my chest. I whipped around, looking for the source of the noise. Hello? I asked. It was coming from the living room. I squinted in the shadows, trying to make sense of the shapes. I could see the silhouette of the floor lamp near the window, the bulky outline of the couch. Something stood between them. Something short with a horrible, contorted face. Can I have more? The voice quietly called out of the darkness. How? How did you get in here? scrambled back into the family room. The golden light enveloped me and I felt slightly better. He's probably just some lost kid. I told myself, I'll, I'll call the police. They'll find his parents. It's all just a misunderstanding. We'll find your parents, okay? I said, choking back the fear. Let me just make a call. We'll get you home safe, okay, buddy? He didn't reply. Instead, he took a slow step forward. As he came towards the light, I saw there was something terribly off about him. He said, tilted strangely to one side. His left arm was twisted and mangled. With each step, his body lurched forward unnaturally. Are you okay? I asked. Silence. The fake blood that dripped from the werewolf's snout now soaked him. His pale little hands were covered in the red, shiny liquid. The black outfit glistened in the light. The fleur was gay. I backed into the family room. I fumbled for my phone. It was gone. I grabbed at anything I could find and my hands latched onto the nearly empty candy bag. This? Is this what you want? The child didn't reply. He took a step forward. Here, you can have it. My terrified state, I threw it at him. The bag bounced off his chest and landed at his feet. He didn't pick it up. Can I have more? I gave you more. He looked at me with those horribly familiar yellow eyes. Then he stopped. He stood just a few feet from me, bloody hands hanging stiffly at his sides. I took a step back and hit the wall. I was cornered. Who are you? I yelled. My plan was to stay calm and call the police. My plan to stay calm and call the police was long gone. I descended to why will you leave me alone? The tiny black pupils fixed on me, and he spoke. For the first time, he didn't ask for more. Do you remember me? What are you talking about? Do you remember what you did to me? His high-pitched, lisping voice was muffled through the mask. Do you remember what you did one year ago? I was storming out of my Drew's 
just give me yours. I stared at him, numb, weak. My heart ached for the poor, pathetic, mangled child in front of me. It was all my fault. I ran him over. I did this to him. But I can't give you mine, I said. I backed away, further into the room. He advanced quickly, walking towards me in swift, lit strides. You don't have a choice, he said. Thank you. 
been online. The awkwardness is still there, of course, but I feel so much less uncomfortable when the people I am being introduced to are just taxed on a screen. However, this does mean that most of my friends tend to live quite far away. A handful of them do live within about an hour's drive of me, so we tend to hang out whenever it's possible. At least we used to before the party. Nowadays, it just feels wrong. It was on one such meetup with three friends of mine that we discussed the possibility of throwing a big party of some sort. We all navigated the same general social circles, and we had considered for a while inviting down the myriad online friends we had acquired over the years, at least the ones we trusted. It was I who suggested we host a party on Halloween. From there, the discussion swiftly turned to themes, since what kind of Halloween party wouldn't have a theme? Jessica suggested that we host something inspired by mythology and ancient history. She had always been quite interested in legends, myths, and classical literature of all kinds, and I recall fondly our discussions of Beowulf, the Epic of Gilgamesh, and the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. As much as I would like, would have liked to indulge her, the others pointed out it could be somewhat of a niche topic, and so the discussion continued. Sadie, Jessica's girlfriend, suggested something named off of horror films. Sadie had, partially at my encouragement, been on a bit of a horror movie kick as of late, and we had enjoyed spending time re-watching some of the old classics together. It seemed like a solid theme, and Jessica and I were almost set to agree on it. But then, it was Jake that suggested his idea. In any queer friend group, there is typically one straight member who's been deemed safe by the others. Jake was that friend. We all considered him trustworthy and never really had to worry about him putting his foot in his mouth, whether the conversation veered towards a rainbow hue. I'd have expected Jake to suggest a historical theme, given his degree in military history, but instead he advised that we go for a traditional sort of Halloween party, popping for apples, scarfing pumpkins, that sort of thing. The rest of us immediately agreed that this would be the best course of action. Not only would it mean that none of the attendees would have to adjust their costumes for the occasion, but also none of us had ever attended such event, and the novelty of something simultaneously nostalgic yet alien was the perfect combination. Instantly, there was discussion of activities, decorations, and whether or not we should pull together our funds to get a fog machine. Now, obviously, the four of us didn't plan out the entire party in one night. We still had to figure out who we adjusted well enough to give Jessica's address to. It was decided early on that her house would be the most suitable for hosting. Send out invitations, and even pull up a couple of online fundraisers to try and get plane tickets for some of our more distant friends. Over the months that this process took, we soon found that what had started out as a mere idle discussion was rapidly taking shape into what seemed like would be a rather excellent celebration. Now, each of us were to contribute some sort of activity that we had watch over and purchase the necessarily su necessary supplies for. Sadie's medical background gave her the rather ghoulish idea of setting up a pumpkin carving table themed after an autopsy, which, while strictly speaking, was a traditional, fit so well with the whole aesthetic of the party that we all found it delightful. Jessica set about acquiring an old-style wooden barrel for the purpose of bobbing for apples, putting our artistic skills to good use with paintings of various Halloween spooks on the side of it. My idea was somewhat silly, but still wound up being put to use. I couldn't find if the game had a name, or if it was just called the mirror game, but I tried to it allege that if you stared at your own face in the mirror for long enough, your mind would distort the image in a rather frightful manner. So I was going to set up the bathroom with candles and a chair, and the lights turned off. Jake decided that he was going to set up a game of dead man's brains. If you've ever read scary stories to tell in the dark, you've probably heard of this game. You set up a series of box and bits of cloth loosely covering the opening, and place each and place within each box some nasty object that feels like the dead body part of a dead man. Peeled grapes for eyes, a bowl of diluted ketchup for blood, a mushy tomato for the titular brain, etc. There was some sort of pseudo bone that was supposed to go along with it. He said he would put his, go his own twist to it. We all thought it was a great idea and that 
used to be good 
instead, I saw the anemic matte sheen of plastic. The basket was draped off the plastic can of some sort of store mannequin. I was more than thoroughly creeped out by this effective little trick. I shrugged. Maybe the voices were recorded, a little technology to bolster an otherwise traditional costume. I felt the fear melting away as I explained it to myself in my head. Just some clever little children, probably with the help of an adult. Smart, I thought. It had certainly got me going for a while. Stay safe, I told them, dropping the last of the candy into the baskets. They didn't acknowledge me. They just stood still on the worn wooden boards of my porch. I shut the door on them. The window darkened as the light on the porch shut off. Odd. Maybe the motion detector stopped working. Some unbidden instinct told me to stay there and wait. I heard the unmistakable sound of footsteps on the porch as the two walked off. Still, the light stayed dark. My relief grew as the odd strangers left my property. Still, something didn't sit right. Something wasn't right. The light was working. It turned on when it detected me. It saw me. It didn't see the kids. The sensor was working. It was state-of-the-art passive infrared. Detected motion by detecting changes in body temperature. Like a human body. Like mine, but not the kids. Whatever was under those pristine white sheets wasn't warm at all. The realization washed over keep running down my spine. My breath came in short rasps. I had to see. I had to know. I could barely bring my hand to the curtains. They were shaking so bad. When I pinched the edge of the curtain between my thumb and my finger, the curtain began to undulate wildly. I filled my lungs and peered through the glass. They were still there, barely, twenty yards away, doing nothing, just standing there, motionless, facing the street. As I watched them, they both swiveled their heads in perfect tandem to affix two pairs of fathomless aisles on the window. There was no way. There was no way they had seen me come to the window. I had to put the back of my hand in my mouth and bite down hard to keep from calling out. They knew. They knew I was there. I backed away from the window, dragging my leaden feet over the carpeted floor. I barely noticed my heel knock the can back over. The beer leaked on out onto the carpet, leaving a widening patch in front of me. I couldn't believe the raw animal fear these two had summoned up in me. Every instinct I had told me to run, run, get help, anything but stay and be trapped in my own house. What could I do? Call the police and tell them that I was scared of two little children trick-or-treating. Call one of my friends past midnight and ask them to come over like a little boy crawling into his parents' room after a nightmare. The situation was ridiculous. My mind told me so. That there had to be a rational explanation for everything. But I could not explain the light, fluttery feeling in my stomach. I could not rationalize the prickly lump in the back of my throat. They'd only said three words to me in those unearthly tones. Who knew how cold those lips were? I shut the door to the kitchen. The sound echoing through the empty house. I turned my chair to face the front door. And then I waited, white-knuckled, for the dawn to come. I must have fallen asleep sometime during that long, cold wait, not daring to move from my chair, paralyzed with fear that one of those shrouded children would appear in my window, or worse yet, behind me. And even that manic store of energy wore out as the night wound to a close. I was woken up by a polite knock on the front door. I sat bolt upright, nearly falling out of my chair. I stumbled to the door, and of the drive from a few hours ago, still lingering like a still funk in the air. I checked the people again. This time, I was confronted with the well scuffed face of one of the our town deputies. We'd been to school together. It's a kind of smallish town where no one was everyone your age if they had history there. He was an earnest man, tough but fair. Good morning, officer. Good morning, he replied. Sarah look on his face told me it was anything but that. His nose twitched as he took in the stale, sour smell of beer steaming off the floor in the morning sun. Had a good night last night. Thought back to the night before. 
was so afraid of her red face and her wide, wild, shining eyes that we just shook her head and clung to Dad's jacket. At this, she shrank to the pavement. You don't love me, she told us. You don't love me. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. Dad just put his arms around us and steered us away. We will be back at eight, he said. Sorry about your mother, kids. She's going through a really tough time right now, and I don't know how to help her. Is she going to be okay? My sister asked. Put his arm around her and said, Yeah, honey, it's going to be okay. She believed him. She was just a little kid. But I was just old enough to realize from the way he said it that he was trying to convince himself as much as us. Fuck. Well, it was Halloween, and we were still kids. and being as cute as we could and being as scary as we could and being as silly as we could and each time we ran back down on the sidewalk our dad would be standing here with a big sad smile to tell us how great we were doing by the end of the night we each had a full pillowcase and my sister was half asleep being carried in the crook of my dad's arm we got home after dark and I was afraid that mom would still be lying on the pavement crying out front but she had gone to her room and didn't come out to bother us even as we sat So I got 